Can you build a financial statement using calculation groups? That's what we are going to explore in this video. Welcome to How to Power BI. My name is Buzz, and if this is the very first time for you visiting this channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to stay up to date on all of my videos in which I share everything I know about Power BI. Let's have a look how we can build a financial statement using a calculation group. In a previous video, we built a financial statement using an input template that gave us the structure, and then we calculated all of the measures that we want to display on that financial statement, and then one main measure that basically pulls in all of the values in the right places with the right formatting. Well, that was a very flexible approach. However, it took a little bit of time to set it all up. Now, in this video, we are going to have a look if we can get to a similar result, but then using calculation groups. And let's see if it's easier. Now, first of all, what is a calculation group and what are calculation items? Now, a calculation group will show as a separate table in your data model, which is not connected to anything. And inside of that table, you have two columns, one column with all of the names of the calculation items and one sort column for these calculation items. Now, a calculation item is basically just a calculation that you can apply on top of any measure. Now to get started, you need an external tool and one of the most popular one is Tabular Editor. So make sure you install that one first. And once you've done that, you will find it here at the top under external tools. Now here we have a free version and a paid version. Now for this video, I'm going to use the free version. And here we can go to the folder with all of the tables that we have in our data model. And then here we can right click on that folder, create new calculation group. And let's call this one financial structure. Now, if we open up that calculation group, you see we have one column that's currently called name. Let's rename that one and let's call this one item. And now we can start adding calculation items to that calculation group. So you just right click on it, create new calculation item. And the first one is going to be the sales. Now over here, we can then write the measure that calculates the sales. However, in my model, I already have all of these measures. For example, I already wrote over here the measures for the sales, the cost of goods sold, the operating expenses, etc. And how to write these measures? Well, of course, depends a little bit on how you build your data model. So we refer to these measures inside of our calculation items. And for each line that we want to have in our financial statement, we have one calculation item. So you see over here, I have the sales, cost of goods sold, that's broken down into labor, materials, overhead, gross margin, et cetera. And for each calculation item, we just refer to the measure that we have in a data model. And there are two things that are worth noting. First of all, if you want to have a little bit of an indent later in your financial statement, then you can just put in some spaces in front of the name. And the second thing is that if you go here to the drop down for the expression, there you can also choose the format string expression and put in the formatting string for how these values need to be displayed. Now, if you don't know how these formatting strings work, then just check out this video over here. All right, so this is in place. So now I want to use that calculation group in my report. So I'm going to click on save. Now back in Power BI, if you go to the data view and you select that new table financial statement structure, then you see here we have two columns, one with the calculation items and one with the sort order. All right. Now, how can we use it? Well, we can build a matrix visual and on that matrix visual, we're going to place the calculation group and we are going to place it onto rows and you see we have a breakdown. Now, it doesn't look so pretty yet, but with some formatting changes, we will get there. So first of all, let's go then to format, style presets, and then choose here minimal. And then we go to grid and let's put the width of the grid to zero. And to get rid of the column header items, well, you cannot really get rid of it, but you can go here onto rows and just put in a space instead of items, and then it disappears. All right, so we have here the breakdown. Now, why don't you see the spaces in front of labor materials overhead? That is because of tax wrap. Now, if you go to format, and then here we go to row headers, and then here you have tax wrap, and we want to turn that off because otherwise it gets rid of any spaces. Now, an alternative way of getting spaces in there would be to have a non-line breaking character, which you can get from the symbol picker or on websites like anticharacter.com. All right, so we have the structure, but we don't have the values yet. So let's now get the values. Now, to get the values in, we just have to create a dummy measure. And the dummy measure can be something like financial values equals one. Now, why doesn't this really matter? Because all of the calculation items are calculations that get applied to this measure. So if we just write here one, it will basically just override 
whatever we have here. So now we can take that dummy measure of financial values, put it onto the values well. You see, we have all of the corresponding values for every single line item. Perfect. So we have already here a basic structure that's completely custom that we can build with a calculation group. Now, the thing that we still need to fix is that for the expenses, like for example, cost of goods sold, we want to have a minus sign. Now to do that, well, we can go back to tabular editor and here we can either put a minus sign in front of the expression or we can make use of the formatting strings, right? So we could also go here to the formatting string, put a minus sign in front of the formatting string and we do that for every single calculation item that needs to be shown with a negative sign. So I go to the next one and do that for all of the expenses. And once you have done that, just click on save, go back to Power BI, and you see all of the expenses now have a little minus sign in front of them. All right, so this is working. However, we can do better than that because we want to probably show it over time. So let's create a breakdown where we have a breakdown by the year and the month. So I go here to my date table, take the year, put it on columns, take the month, put it also on columns, and then we can expand down to the month level. And you see, we have a nice breakdown by month. However, I don't want to have the totals. So I go here to formatting and then here the row subtotals and column subtotals. I'm going to get rid of those. So here we are looking at the absolute values by year and month, but maybe you also want to show the percentage of sales, or maybe you want to show the delta. So month over month values. Now to do that, we can create another calculation group that applies these calculations to, well, our dummy measure financial values. So let's now go back to Tabular Editor and create a second calculation group. So here we follow the same steps. So right click on tables, create new, and then calculation group. Now this one is going to be time intelligence. So time intelligence. And here we're going to have three calculation items. So let's create them. So we have one, two, and three. Now the first one is going to show the absolute values and the name that I applied to this calculation item is as I want to show it inside of a report. So I'm going to just put a dollar sign for the absolute values, then I go to the next one. Now here I want to show percentages. And then for the third one, there I want to have a delta symbol to say this is month over month. So now we can add all of the calculations to each calculation item. So starting off with the first one, now here we can just put in any measure, for example, sales. And then we go to the next one, and here we have to calculate the percentage of sales. Now, here to calculate the percentage of sales, well, how you do that depends, of course, very much on your data model. However, the basic logic comes down to first having the sales value. Now, I can do that with a calculate function where I put a filter on the financial item sales. Then I have over here a variable for the financial itself. And to return the corresponding value, we can just say selected measure. And then here we want to divide one by the other. And that's it. Now the same for calculating the month of month change. So here I first calculate the previous month value, then the current month value, and then I check if we have a value for both. And if we do, then subtract one from the other. Okay, so now we have our three calculation items. Now what you also need to check is the formatting strings. For example, for the percentages over here, I go to format string expression, and then we want to have something like this. And then the same for the absolute values. So I'm going to use this custom formatting string where we show everything in millions. And then for the delta month over month, there I want to have also the same. Or here you also have the option to say, okay, for the negative values, so the second part of the custom formatting string, we want to have everything in, could they, in brackets like this. All right, now one thing that you need to check before you go back to Power BI is that you have here for the calculation precedence the right order. So that means we first need to calculate, well, each single item, so that first calculation group. So if I go there and click on that calculation group, you see here we have calculation group precedence zero, or uh, if you want to start counting from one, one. And then here for the second calculation group, for the time intelligence, there I would then have a two so that everything happens in the right sequence. All right, so now I can save it, go back to Power BI. And you see here we have our new calculation group, time intelligence. I take over here that column. I didn't rename it, still called name. And I'm going to place it right below the month. And then we can expand down, down to that level. All right, so we have all of the numbers that we wanna show on the financial statement. However, 
it looks a little bit messy. So let's clean it up a bit. Now, starting off with the headers. So here we don't want to show the field names. So we can just go over here to the corresponding fields and put a space instead of the name. Now, once that is done, we can go to formatting and clean up the headers a bit. So here we go to column headers. And there I want to have the column headers in bold and I want to align them nicely in the middle. Now, you might think you can just go to the last column for that month. So for example, here we have February. I go here to the Delta column and make this a little bit wider. But you see, then the numbers also move to the right unless I change the alignment. So that's not perfect. Now, what I would prefer is to have a really a separate empty column in between the months. Now, this we can do by simply adding an empty calculation item in Tabular Editor. So let's go back. And here I go to the Time Intelligence Calculation Group. And there we can add a new calculation item. And over here, I want to have a blank. When you just do a space, you will see it doesn't let you. So we need to have something that looks like a space. Now, this could be, for example, here from anti-character.com, an anti-character that you can copy. Then you go back and you just paste it in there for the name. And then here for the formula, we just want to return a blank, just like this. Then we can save it, then go back to Power BI. And now you see, it's still not there. Now that's because we return a blank. And there's basically no value in that column. So we have to go to that calculation group that we place on columns. Let's say that we want to show items with no data. So now it is there. So you see right next to the Delta column, I can create a little bit of space to the right of it. All right. And this way we can create blocks for each single month. Now you might also notice that here in the end for the months for which we have no sales values or any values yet. Well, these columns now also show. Now, if you don't want that, then you just have to adjust the formula a little bit. So I go back to Tabular Editor. And here, instead of returning a blank, we could also just have uh, set quotation mark, quotation mark, would also have worked. And here we could also wrap this inside of an if that we check if we actually have sales values or any value. For example, here we can say sales and is it different from zero? If it's different from zero, then I want to return an empty string and otherwise nothing. So we can just close the if function and save it. Now you see the empty columns for those months are still there. However, that's just because over here, we have to turn show items with no data off. All right, so that problem is solved. Now the percentages, not a decimal that we don't really need. So I go back and I just update the formatting expression so that we get rid of the decimal. All right, so now we have a little bit of separation between the different months. Now the next thing that we can do is add conditional formatting so that we highlight the background by adding a color for all of the financial items that are really important, like the sales, the cost of goods sold, gross margin, operating expenses. Now, to apply conditional formatting, we can do the following. Let's go over here and add a new measure. And let's call this one highlight rows. And here we wanna check the row item. And if it's, for example, sales, then return a certain color. So we can do this with an if function. And then here to check which value we have, we can use the selected value function. Now we want to check the item. So over here we have the calculation group FS structure item. And then we can have an in statement. And we want to check if this is in the following table that we can define as follows with opening curly brackets. And then I go to the next line. And the first one that I want to check if it's sales. And then I just continue like this for all of the other ones. All right, so I've done that quickly. And now if it is in this list, then I want to have the color light blue. And if it's not, then I want to have white. Then we can close our if function and that's it. Now let's try to apply the conditional formatting. So I select the table, go to format, and then here we have cell elements. And then here we want to apply a background color using that measure that we just wrote. So we have to go here for field value and then apply it to values and total. And then we look for that highlight rows measure. Click OK. And again, it doesn't work. Now, why doesn't it work? Because conditional formatting is a little bit tricky when you have calculation groups. Now here, the calculation items, they also get applied to the measure that we're using for the conditional formatting. So we have to adjust the calculations that we have for the calculation items so that we don't override basically the measure that we are using for conditional formatting. So again, let's go back to Tabular Editor. And then for each calculation item, we have to write the following if statement. So we have to say if, and then check the measure name. 
So the measure name that we apply the calculation item to. And if the measure name is equal to, well, that measure that we are using for conditional formatting, so highlight rows, then we want to actually have the normal value of that measure. So selected measure. And otherwise, just the normal sales amount. All right. And then we can close the if function. And over here, I just wrote measure name, not a selected measure name. And now we just have to repeat exactly the same thing for all of the main items. So I'm just going to copy this over, go to the next one. And over here, instead of cost of goods sold, I'm just paste this in there and replace sales with cost of goods sold. And you do this for gross margin, all of the other ones. Now, if we then save it, go back to Power BI, you will see there is an error. Now, what is this error? Let's click on see details. And over here we have cannot convert value light blue of type text to type numeric. All right, so one of the calculations that we have for the calculation items is causing problems. Now, the first question that you should have is which one of the two calculation groups is causing the issue? So I'm just going to take one out, for example, the one that we have for time intelligence and columns. I see when I take that one out, everything looks fine. I do have conditional formatting applied, so it is working. However, there's just a calculation mistake for one of the items. Now, if we go back to tabular editor and over here, I go to the one that calculates the percentages. Now here for this calculation item, we have a division, which probably is causing an issue because we added that empty column. And I guess that is what's causing uh, the error. Now here, instead of returning the result, I'm just going to copy this over from sales and then return over here the result. And if there's an error, so if error, then we want to have an empty string, just like this. And if we just get rid of these brackets over here, then save it. And now I'm going to go to my time intelligence calculation group and I'm going to put it over here on columns, expand down. Then you see there is still an error because also here, this last part we need to do for the absolute values as well. So here we can just say, sales and then for the last one there we want to have the month over month variable all right so that problem is also solved so now the very last thing is that i want to have a little bit of extra space in between for example the cost of goods sold and gross margin or put a line in between now also here we can solve it in a similar way as we did for the empty columns so if we go back to table editor then over here we can just add new calculation items in between now, remember, we cannot just do a space. We need that empty character, which we can just copy over. And then you can take that calculation item and put it wherever you like. Now, you cannot leave it empty, this expression. So and we can return over here, quotation mark, quotation mark, something like this. And we just have to do that for every empty spot that we want to have in our structure. Now, if you want to have a line, you could also go over here and put in underscores or something like that. All right. Now I'm just going to repeat this to my times. And for the second one, you just have to watch out that you don't name it exactly the same. So you can put a space after it, that's fine. And for the second one, we can put two spaces after the empty character. And over here, we can actually not just do an empty string. I think we need to return a blank instead. So I'm just going to update these empty calculation items with a blank. And you see now there's no error, but because these are blanks, well, we don't have any values for those rows. And that means we have to go here to rows, show items with no data, and that looks much better. All right, so now we have over here our income statement, our financial statement that we built using two calculation groups. One to create the structure on the left-hand side, and it basically comes down to having one calculation item for each row that you need. And then for the columns, kind of the same. Now we have a breakdown by the year and the month, and then the three columns underneath it for the absolute values, the percentages and delta. Well, there we have also one calculation item. And then also for that empty column in between, also calculation item. So this is how you can build a financial statement using calculation groups. Now, of course, in Power BI, you have many different approaches that you could take to build an income statement like this one over here. And I'm very curious to hear what approach you are taking. And if you haven't seen my other video on how to build a financial statement without using a calculation group, then check out this video over here. And if you have any other questions, just post them in the comment section below. I want to thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.